Hi, I am going to talk about our paper AES LBBB, AES Mode for Lightweight and BBB Secure Authenticated Encryption. I am Takeshi Sugawara, and this is a joint research work with Yusuke Naito and Yu Sasaki. In this paper, we propose a new authenticated encryption mode called LBBB for AES accelerators. Our motivation is to provide higher security with lower memory overhead by using AES accelerators available and will be available in many computational platforms. We propose a new mode of operation LBBB and its instantiation AES LBBB. BBB represents beyond the birthday bound security and AES LBBB achieves almost 128-bit security using AES. L represents lightweight in terms of memory size. The diagram on the bottom shows the operational unit for processing a 128-bit block in AES LBBB. We use a 256-bit internal state flowing from left to right, and the upper half is the AES 128-bit secret key, and the bottom half is the 128-bit AES internal state. To realize a large internal state to resist internal collision attack, we update the AES key as we process the message blocks, which is the key point for reducing the memory size. Lightweight cryptography has been a hot topic in cryptography for more than a decade. The motivation is to design crypto algorithms that achieve better performances in resource-constrained IoT devices. In particular, NIST is running a competition for choosing a new lightweight standard, making this research area very active in the last few years. Most candidates in the competition use newer lightweight primitives such as ASCOM P, Skinny, and GIFT instead of AES because they are better in various ways. There were only three AES-based candidates in the previous round, and unfortunately none of them survived to the final round. The new lightweight primitives are the reasonable choices for rigorous optimization, however, AES-based schemes are still valuable especially because AES accelerators are getting more and more common in many computational platforms. AES accelerators are everywhere in these days. Most modern processors including x86, ARM, and RISC-V have AES instructions. AES coprocessors are getting very popular in general purpose microcontrollers, especially for the recent ARM V8 architectures. We can expect that these AES accelerators will be available in the future for backward compatibility, interoperability, and standardization. People are still using RC4 in WPA2 Wi-Fi security, which is a good example showing the resilience of one standardized algorithm. AES GCM is the most common AES-based scheme, and its security is limited by a birthday bound, and is 60 bits only. People are moving toward 128-bit security, and designing a better AEAD for AES is our motivation. There are conventional AES-based modes for BBB security. In particular, ALE appeared in 2013 is an AES-based AEAD claiming 128-bit security. It uses the AES run function as a basic building block and processes 128-bit message blocks for each four-round AES operation achieving very high data rate. We can use AES instructions for implementing these AES round functions. 
Meanwhile, AES coprocessors usually finishes the entire AES encryption at once instead of a round function, so they are not for ALE. Unfortunately, there is an attack and ALE does not provide the claim security level. Another candidate is Remus N2, a family of Romulus, which is the NIST LWC finalist. It achieves VBB security, and since it uses a block cipher as a primitive, we can also use AES coprocessors for accelerating Remus N2. The diagram on the bottom shows the Remus N2's basic unit for processing a 128-bit message block. It uses a 384-bit internal state flowing from left to right. The upper and middle lanes represent the AES key and the AES internal state. Remus N2 uses additional 128 bits for the bottom lane and reducing this 128 bits is the key challenge we tackle in this paper. Before coming into the main part, I want to emphasize the importance of memory size in lightweight cryptography. Memory, or register, dominates the entire circuit area in compact hardware implementations. Here are quick examples. A 4-bit S-Box typically uses 20 to 40 gates. In contrast, a 128-bit register needs 6 to 900 gates, and reducing this essential memory is almost impossible with hardware design. Memory is much cheaper in software, but it's still crucial. The memory size determines the chip cost, and there is continuous pressure for low memory software implementation, even today. More recent microcontrollers have a special memory for security, which is even smaller. For example, some L11, a microcontroller we use for our benchmarking, has trust RAM, which is limited to 256 bytes only. Okay, we are coming back to the motivation of this work. We designed the scheme with these design goals. First, we want the beyond the birthday band security, achieving almost 128-bit security using AES. Second, we want to achieve 256 memory, meaning no extra memory outside a yes. Third, we don't want to compromise the speed too much and want to maintain the right one performance. This means that we want to process a 128-bit message block for each AES call. Finally, the table on the bottom compares ALE, Remus N2, and ours, and we can see that ours satisfy all the three design goals. Here is the list of our contributions. We propose the new mode of operation LBBB. We specify AES LBBB, an instantiation of LBBB using AES128. We benchmark the software and hardware performances and compare them with the state of the art. We implement the software on a microcontroller with an AES coprocessor and implement the hardware for ASIC. We also implement Remus N2 for comparison. The tables on the right shows the software and hardware performances in which AES LBBB shows better performances. Finally, we discussed the design extensions for further performance. These figures compare the basic processing units of LBBB and Remus N2. In these diagrams, a box with a black bar represents a block cipher, or BC, and the input toward the bar represents a secret key for the block cipher. A 256-bit internal state is necessary for the resistance against internal collision, needed to achieve 128-bit security. A block cipher's internal state is 
bits in case of a yes, which is not enough. And that is why Remus N2 uses the additional 128-bit state. Our challenge is to further reduce the state size, and we achieve this by using the block ciphers key in addition to the internal state. To achieve the randomness in this 256-bit internal state, we feed the block ciphers output to the key. We mix them through the pi and lambda functions, which are the linear functions with several requirements. In the instantiation with AES, we set both pi and lambda as the constant field multiplication, so we can implement them very efficiently. This figure shows how we construct LBBP's hashing and encryption. It's basically a simple iteration of the basic operation unit, but there are some important points. First, we can feed 256-bit associated data block at once, so this scheme's rate becomes 2 in hashing. We use yet another function, eta, for domain separation. And the eta is a simple LFSR in the final instantiation. After feeding all the message blocks, the final key state in the block cipher is used as a tag. We prove the security in the ideal cipher model, that is, a block cipher is ideal under the nonce respecting setting in which there is no repeated nonce between messages. We use the NAE security, which claims the indistinguishability from the ideal system, consists of a random bit oracle and a rejection oracle. The random bit oracle returns random cipher texts, and the rejection oracle always returns rejection in tag verification. As far as we interact with the ideal system, we obviously learn nothing about the plain text, and forging a tag never succeeds. And we are going to prove that LBBP is as good as the ideal one. For the NAE security of LBBP, we can prove that LBBP achieves n minus log 2n bit security. They are indistinguishable up to 2 to the power of n data blocks in all queries, 2 to the power of n over n data blocks in decryption queries, or 2 to the power of n over n local complexity. As a result, the final security becomes 121 bits with AES. In the next few slides, we are going to explain the security proof. This is a proof sketch for the encryption. In this proof, the goal is to show the indistinguishability between the LBBB encryption and the random bit oracle. For the purpose, we should analyze how the scheme maintains the randomized state. The first two block cipher calls randomize the entire state, and we get a 2n bit completely randomized internal state. Since we consider the nonce respecting scenario, the randomness are propagated to the last block, and the internal state values are all independent and random as long as no state collision occurs. The collision complexity determines the security, and by the birthday analysis, the collision complexity is order 2 to the power of n ciphertext blocks in the encryption. So LBBB achieves n-bit security regarding encryption. We are going to explain the next one, the proof sketch for decryption. A forgery attack is a matter, and we analyze two attack cases. The first case is to guessing a tag in decryption. The key point is that we can get a fresh tag for each new input block to the last block cipher. In this case, the tag is almost random, so the success probability is 2 to the power of minus n 
for each decryption query. As a result, the forgery attack with this case requires 2 to the power of n decryption queries satisfying n bit security. The next forgery attack is revealing some internal state in decryption. LBBB uses a 2 n bit internal state and uh, half of it, the one shown in red in this figure, is public because they are exposed through ciphertext. If the adversary can obtain the remaining n bits, there is no secret anymore and forging a tag is trivial. So the key point is the complexity of recovering the remaining n bit secret shown in blue in this figure. Using the multi-collision technique on the public part, we can ensure that revealing one of the secret values requires 2 to the power of n over n data blocks in decryption queries or 2 to the power of n over n local complexity. So LBBB achieves n minus log n bit security regarding decryption. AES LBBB is an instance of LBBB using AES128. For the linear functions, we use a constant multiplication by 2 to the power of 8 for both pi and lambda. Constant multiplication is widely used as a lightweight linear function in lightweight cryptography. We use 2 to the power of 8 because we preferred a bitewise operation. Another good thing is that we can combine pi and lambda using the distributive property to further reduce the computational cost. We are moving on to performance evaluation. We use microchip some L11 microcontroller as a target platform. It's an ARM Cortex M23 MCU and has an AES coprocessor works at 57.2 cycles per byte. We implement the entire AEAD operations with the SuperCorp API. We use memory aware implementation. The depth of the nested functions is a tricky part because deep nest increases stack memory. For a fair comparison, we limit the depth to one level from the top level functions. We put sensitive values only in independently acquired global memory, assuming a special memory, and never put them in the stack. We implement the current state of the art, Remus N2 using the same design policies and compared it with AES LBBB. This table compares AES LBBB and Remus N2 in RAM, stack, ROM, and speed. AES LBBB uses 16 byte or 128 bit less memory because of its smaller state. Although it's relatively smaller than the 88 byte stack, the secure memory needed for storing sensitive values can be more crucial as I mentioned earlier. AES LBBB also outperforms Remus N2 in ROM and speed. Since AES is very efficient in this platform, non-AES operations such as the linear functions or elementary operations such as moving and exploring bottleneck the performances. AES LBBB uses simpler and less non-AES operations which contributed these better performances. We are moving on to hardware implementation. This diagram shows the circuit architecture for AES LBBB. AES obviously dominates the entire hardware cost and for compact circuit area we use popular bike serial architecture. Something special about it is column-oriented serialization and integrated inverse key schedule. We should care about byte ordering with a mode of operation 
and we choose the column-oriented serialization which respect the AES native ordering. On the fly, key scheduling is very popular among compact hardware implementation. It updates the key in place, which is the problem for various modes that requires the original AES key in the following operations. So we should recover the original one from the last round key. We efficiently achieve this by adding small amount of circuit components in the key array as shown in blue. We also integrated the constant multiplication by 2 to the power of 8 needed for LBBB in the key array. We also implemented Remus N2 using the same AES circuit for a fair comparison. We evaluated their circuit areas using NANGATE 45 nanometer standard cell library. This table compares the circuit area of AES LBBB, Remus N2, and the baseline AES. AES LBBB is smaller by more than 1000 gates, which is a great improvement. And this mostly comes from the reduction of 128-bit extra state, which uses more than 1000 gates in Remus N2. Finally, we discussed the extension of LBBB regarding inverse key schedule. As I mentioned in the hardware implementation, we should recover the original AES key after the on-the-fly on key schedule. We update the key state K in place using a key schedule function KSF within the block cipher call. Before proceeding to the next step, we should apply KSF inverse to get K out of KSF K. Then we can move on to the next processing with the pi function. This is necessary for AES, but we can improve it for non-AES primitives. The idea is to integrate KSF into the pi function instead of constant multiplication in AES LBBB. By doing this, we can completely skip KSF inverse. However, the pi function should satisfy certain requirements and AES key schedule doesn't satisfy them, unfortunately. KSF of some block ciphers satisfy the requirements, and Karan is one example. So Karan LBBB can be very small, although the resulting scheme will have 64-bit security because of the Karan's block size. Another approach is redesigning KSF. More recent block cipher designs use simpler key schedule with which KSF inverse is very efficient. That is in contrast with AES KSF that incorporates SBOX operations. GIFT128 is the case, and GIFT128 LBBB achieves almost 128 bit security. Another candidate, which is something in between, is using a modified AES having a better KSF, such as the one by Ko et al. We can still accelerate such a scheme using fine-grained accelerators such as AES and I. I'm concluding my talk. LBBB provides beyond the birthday band security at smallest memory cost for block ciphers. AES LBBB enjoys the power of AES accelerators and it outperformed the conventional state-of-the-art Remus N2 in both software and hardware benchmarks. We finally discussed the design extensions. Thank you very much for watching.